today. Intel's entire 13th gen leaked. GPU prices have reached record lows. RX 7000 gets double this. Here's the 4090 Ti, and Ryzen 7000 performance is off the charts. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, Intel's entire 13th gen Raptor Lake lineup has been leaked. The report comes from WCCF Tech, and they're about what you would expect. Starting things off, we have the i9 lineup, which is the 13900K, 13900, 900KF, 900F, and 900T. These are all 24 core CPUs with 8 performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. As usual, the F models lack an integrated GPU, and the T models come with a base TDP of just 35 watts. Next, we have the i7 parts, which are the 13700K, 13700, 700KF, 700 F and 700T. These are all 16 core parts with 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. Finally, we have the i5 models, which are the 13600K, 13400, 13600KF, 13400F, and there aren't any T models for the i5s. The 600 variants come with 14 cores, with 6 being performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. The 400 series parts are 10 core CPUs with 6 performance cores and 4 efficiency efficiency cores. The models did get a fairly nice jump in boost clocks, with the 13900K reaching up to 5.8 GHz max on up to two cores. Of course, the 12900KS was pretty close to that, but still, not bad. At the end of the day, pricing will likely be a big factor when it comes to how well they can compete with Ryzen 7000. But first, if you're like me and you love PC hardware, you never want to miss anything. But it's hard to keep up with all the major new releases. There's just so much noise out there. That's why I came up with Meld Alerts. It's completely free, and basically, when major PC hardware is released, I'll send you a notification. Plus, I'll tell you where you can get great deals so you can actually get it at a good price. I may even send some build suggestions from time to time. With that said, let me know what releases you're most excited about by dropping a comment below. And don't worry, I'm not going to flood your inbox. Some weeks you won't get anything, and others you might get a few emails. To sign up, just visit MeldAlerts.com and fill out the form. It's just your email. Once again, that's MeldAlerts.com. Next up for today, it looks like GPU prices have reached record lows, specifically the 3090 and 3080 series. And that's obviously because next-gen GPUs are set to be released with the higher end first. More specifically, when it comes to price, you can get NVIDIA's 3090 for under $1,000 on Amazon right now, as well as the 3090 Ti for under $1,100. Of course, those GPU prices were already quite high when they first launched, but they're significantly lower than MSRP and lower than they've really ever been. Plus, let's not forget that the 3090 Ti was just released in March. If you're looking for something cheaper, the 3080 Ti is as low as $739.99 on Best Buy right now. Or you can pick up AMD's 6900 XT for even less at $719.99 on Amazon. Unfortunately, prices aren't going down much on lower end cards, but that will likely change as AMD and Nvidia gear up to release their next gen cards for the lower end. Unfortunately, that may end up being a little while from now. Next up, we're starting to see some real specs for AMD's upcoming RX 7000 GPUs. The story originally comes from a new publish in the Linux repository by AMD's Aaron Layout. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but it was ultimately found by Koala Kant's Dream and Leaker Kepler on Twitter. And as you can see, there are a couple big changes. For starters, the vector register file is going up to 192 kilobytes from 128 per SIMD. Then the L0 vector cache will be doubling from 16 kilobytes to 32 per compute unit. Finally, the L1 that goes in each shader array has been doubled to 256 kilobytes from 128. The rest of the cache system here looks to be roughly the same, but doubling such low-level cache has the potential to bring a big jump in performance. The rest of the architecture obviously matters a lot as well, and to keep up with that as they come out, make sure you're subscribed to GamerMeld. 
Next up, we have our first look at NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 4000 series through a custom card. The image of the card was originally shared by known leaker Graymon55, and according to him, this is NVIDIA's RTX 4090 Ti, so it's a full fat 8102 GPU. When it comes to the design, it obviously doesn't have any markings, so this is likely a prototype card. It could be from an upcoming ASUS Tough card, or maybe from the MSI Suprem series? I'm not sure, but one thing's for certain. Next-gen GPUs are going to be really big. You can see that this card has three huge fans and it's just a beefy GPU in general. Not only that, but another leak claims that NVIDIA's RTX 4080 currently has two variants floating around, one with 12GB of GDDR6X memory and one with 16. But of course, that doesn't mean both variants will launch. Remember that long-rumored 20GB RTX 3080 from a while back? Well, an actual model of it was recently shown off, which proves it was in fact a thing. Nvidia simply decided against releasing it, likely due to AMD's RX 6000 GPUs. Basically, things can change a bit before the final product, but one thing is pretty clear. These cards are likely coming very soon. And lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen 7000 has gotten faster yet again. If you've been following the channel, we recently saw a few new benchmarks from Cinebench R23 on the Ryzen 9 7950X. The highest score from those got up to a whopping 37,452. Well, a new benchmark has surfaced from the Chipel Forum, and as you can see, it's nearly 39,000. Specifically, we're looking at an unreal 38,984. What's wild about that is that it crushes Intel's upcoming 24-core 13,900K at stock, and even gets close to it with Intel's part using an unlocked power limit, meaning Intel's CPU is using as much as 350 watts. Oh, and that reminds me, between next-gen GPUs and CPUs, I've got to get a new PSU. Regardless, while I'm not sure if the 7950X is stock or not, given Ryzen 7000's power limit is 230 watts, we at least know it's definitely nowhere near 350. So next gen Ryzen is getting similar performance while at much lower wattage. Not only that, but this is still an engineering sample, so the final product should be even better. Basically, AMD's next gen CPUs are looking to be a massive upgrade of a Ryzen 5000. Time will tell if Intel can compete with their 13th gen Raptor Lake. So while that does it for today, what are you most excited for? Next-gen GPUs or CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!